Hi everybody, Gerdy Verwoerd here, their Great League Guiding Coach with episode 21 of the series on how to safely hike mountains and any other part of nature for that matter. So, tip number 21 is closely, closely, excuse me, closely related to tip number 20. Tip number 20 was all about taking your time. Now, you may think that this one is exactly the same thing and like I said, it is closely related, but there is a difference. Um, how do I say it? <laughs> tip number 21 is all about pacing yourself. So when I take people into the mountains with me for the first time, adjust this a little bit, there we go. Um, when I take people into the mountains with me for the first time, what often happens is they set off at the pace they're used to in their regular life or when they hike back at home. Now most people are not as fortunate as I am uh, to be living among mountains so at home usually means quite flat country and when you are used to hiking in flat country um, you probably have a very nice high tempo which is what I used to have. I'm Dutch, I come from the Netherlands and um, it was very, very easy for me to go fast. I did about um, six, sometimes even seven, well seven is a lot, six kilometers per hour, where the average hiker does about four to five kilometers per hour. So I was pretty quick. And I set off at that pace the first couple of times when I was hiking mountains until it hit me that it probably was a good idea to slow down a little bit. Hang on, there you go just released my dog a little bit and um, that hit home especially when I was hiking one day and I saw this old guy in front of me and he must have been close to 70 easily so I was like well I can easily get this guy you know I can easily overtake him because I can't get let somebody that is uh, about 30 years my senior get to the mountaintop before I am before I get there. So I stepped on the gas, overtook this guy, greeted him uh, very friendly. He greeted me back. And uh, he greeted me again 15 minutes later when he overtook me as I stood with my hands on my knees trying to catch my breath and trying to catch, to get the cramp to go out of my legs because I had made a classic mistake of going too fast. And what I learned from this guy is that you have to find a pace that um, you can maintain. So by now, years in, uh, and to be honest, quite a bit of training in, get a bit of uh, getting used to in, I have, find, I have found a pace that I can maintain for something like four to six hours and even longer when I have to. And every beginning of the season, it feels like I am incredibly slow. However, I have learned that when I keep that pace, when I do it like that, I can hike up a mountain, get to the summit without dying halfway through, without actually, with still, uh, not without, but um, or without having spent all my energy um, and just, you know, have enough left to actually enjoy everything that is that that it that is laid out before me in a, in incredible views to have enough energy to safely descend um, the mountain again uh, and to have enough energy to enjoy the whole thing again tomorrow but i had to learn how to do that and the first thing you have to learn is to just slow down Find a pace at which you can still talk. <laughs> you know, and if you sing in your head for all I care, what I found is taking one step to breathe in and taking the next step to breathe out really helps me. But find a pace you can maintain. Because that way you'll enjoy yourself more. You won't be panting all the time. You won't feel like your lungs are collapsing. You won't have your legs cramp up you still have energy left when you get to the summer to actually enjoy what it is that you're doing um, all those kinds of things so yes it is closely related to tip number 20 but this is tip number 21 
pace yourself. As always, go there greatly. Bye-bye.